I'm convinced at this point that RPF1s operate on something similar to the cat distribution system, where no one actively seeks them out, you just kind of wind up and then fall in love with them and have them in your life forever. Because there is no way in hell you people are buying this wheel that often. Welcome back to another episode of All About, is that what we're calling this series? I don't know, man. Great, all about NK wheels. Before we get into the video, do me a favor and hit the like button, comment what brand we should do next, and please, for the love of God, they're holding my family hostage, subscribe to the video. Also, if you have a car with NKs or any wheels on it, upload it to our vehicle gallery and take part in our monthly fitment battles where you can win huge prizes. This month's prize is a set of Odd DSX wheels. Now, let's get into it. Let's Let's talk about the history of NK. These dudes have been around since 1950, 74 years of making wheels. Jesus Christ, I hope I do not have to do that. Originally starting out in Shizuoka, Japan, NK has exploded into one of, maybe the, largest wheel company on the planet. NK gets their name from, well, nothing. Huh? That don't make no sense! The company has literally never explained it. There are different theories on it, but none of them have ever been confirmed. However, the name is written in katakana, which is a Japanese alphabet that represents English characters because the Japanese have three alphabets for some reason. So people speculate that they literally just picked a cool sounding name. Anyway, much like every other JDM wheel companies, these guys give us basically nothing to work with. So if you like what I'm giving you here, hit like so the editors feel appreciated because they consulted the ancient text and cobbled some information together on their history. Shout out Wikipedia specifically. Specifically, my high school teachers told me I couldn't use you as a source, but look at me now making YouTube videos for a wheel company. So, basically, NK was formed in 1950 and, well, they started making wheels. They made a lot of them and by 1967 they had opened a new factory specifically to export wheels from Japan to the rest of the world. Well, that was going so well they established NK International in Michigan in 1984. Then, in 1985, for some reason, they established NK America in Columbus, Indiana, which was their U.S. wheel manufacturing plant. Why they started making wheels in Indiana when the cars they were trying to put the wheels on were made in Detroit, I have no f idea, but that's what they did. Anyway, from 1987 to 97, they expanded all over Asia, opening factories in Malaysia, China, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Then in 97, they opened yet another U.S. factory, this time in Florida. I guess they wanted to see if bath salts and alligators could make their wheels lighter or something like that. Huh? Then, in 1995, one of the most pivotal moments in NK's history occurred when they partnered up with McLaren F1 and became the official supplier of McLaren's F1 team. One of you F1 nerds can tell me if this is a good thing or a bad thing because I really could care less oh, about watching brother, a bunch of people this this guy stinks! Bum, 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 bum. Copyright music. Bah. But you guys are rabid fans and can tell me if McLaren's a good or bad F1 team. Lando Norris wins for the first time in Formula One! Anyway, regardless, for the next two decades, NK opened and closed and moved factories around like crazy, earning all kinds of certifications in the process, like the prestigious QS9000 and ISO9000 certifications, meaning that they just make some really good <laughs> So what makes NK wheels so good? Well, unless you've been living under a rock for the last ever, 74 years to be exact, NK does two things really well. They make really, really light wheels and they make them really, really cheap. So you know what we're starting off with here. We're talking about the big daddy, the best seller, the wheel you love to hate, the Rolex wearing diamond ring, wearing, wearing kiss stealing, woo, wheel and dealing, limousine right. The RPF1. The RPF1, which stands for racing pretty fast. No, it doesn't. I made that up. Can you hey, hey, funny guy. I got a joke for you! What smells rotten and puts people to sleep? Is a wheel produced with NK's proprietary revolutionary MAT technology. This reduces weight by 10 to 15%, which might not sound like much, but for our male audience, tell me you wouldn't be stoked on 10 to 15% more on something. Anyway, the RPF1 uses these super thin spokes combined with the MAT manufacturing process, some aggressive pocketing around the lug holes, and all other kinds of proprietary NK secret sauce to make these some of the lightest wheels on the planet. The biggest boy, the 18 10 and a half, comes in right around 19 pounds, which is pretty damn light. Now you might be thinking, all that technology and a semi kind of sort of forged-ish wheel must cost a small fortune. Wrong again. In the biggest size, that 18 10 and a half, $409 a wheel right there on 3piece.us, link down here, bundle with tires and save by the way. Oh, and the RPF1s are literally derived from the wheels used in 95 on the McLaren F1 car, so you get to say you have F1 technology on your clapped up Miata, which is pretty neat. Huh? So NK basically has the winning formula here. Make them light, make them cheap, and make them strong. How do they do the last part? Well, NK created a testing spec, which is called Spec E, which is basically 
basically just a giant flex. They set their standards higher than the industry JWL testing standard involving a higher drop point on the impact testing and 20% more cycles on the rotary and radial fatigue tests. NK themselves say that the spec E represents NK's confidence in its technology and quality, which translated from Japanese corporate speak into plain English, you our wheels are better. Now, rapid fire round, let's talk about a whole bunch of other NK wheels since they do in fact make more than just the RPF1. Shocking, I know. They've got a whole bunch of series and I'm just gonna run through them as quickly as possible. Now, one place where we do have to dodge and points. NK makes a lot of really cool styles, but they also make a lot of super ultra cringe garage sale discount tire looking wheels. We're not going to cover most of those. These are only NK's most based and red pilled wheels. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. First up, we've got the Racing and Racing Revolution series. If you couldn't tell from the name, we have a lot of questions about you. But these are NK's lightweight performance oriented wheels for racing. You all know and love the RPF1, but here's some of my personal favorites, the NT03 Plus M and the NT03 Plus RR. These wheels have that really cool strength adding ring around the outer edge of the wheel, super thin spokes, and a ton of detail in the lug area. They look really sick on anything, but I'm a sucker for them on S chassis, Focus STs, and any other cool hot hatch. The PF06, these look kind of like the Buddy Club P1, and I'm definitely here for that. Love to see them on a Civic or something similar. The RPF1 RS. This is like an RPF1, but with a deep lip. Not much to say here. That's sick. RS 05 RR. I remember seeing these on a 32 GTR a few years back, and I thought they looked super rad. NK's most expensive wheel, but for good reason. The spokes are very sharp and angular, and they have a ton of concavity. These will set you back around two grand, but they're worth it in my eyes. PF01 Evo. Looks like a hybrid between the G35 OEM wheel and the Sierra Kiwami with a fat lip and they look super rad. Next up, tuning series. More street focused, but a little cheaper. Less focused on weight optimization and more on looks. Some standouts from that series. The T6R looks kind of like that other six spoke wheel from Japan. Can't remember the name. Someone drop it in the comments. Uh, thought Japanese wheel companies never made reps. Anyway, the TS5 is a very classic five spoke wheel. Kind of harkens back to the fn one rc The Raijin is a very nice mesh wheel with wide open windows between the spokes, which is one of NK's most subtle designs. And if you're looking for a classy looking street wheel, these are the ones. I could definitely see them on like a GTI or an M340. The TSV split five spoke wheel comes in a bunch of colors and really looks good on just about anything. I've seen this on all kinds of cars. Big fan. The performance series. Got to keep it a buck with you guys here. Not much to write home about. This is where NK goes for a bit more of that mass market appeal and they just don't do it for me, but they might for you. From this line, I am a big fan of the EV5, which is a super, super retro looking 90 style five spoke wheel with a lip. And the new Adventure and Overlander styles are cool if you're into the whole lifted crossover Subaru Forester Crosstrek thing. The classic series. NK has two wheels in the series, the 92 and the Compact. Both are absolute bangers. I've seen so many 92s on EG hatches that I'm convinced they just come with them now. And last up, we got truck and SUV. NK just dropped the RPT1, which looks sick and comes in Raptor fitment. NK, send me a set if you're watching this. Beyond the RPT1, which is super, super rad looking, there's not much here that's particularly interesting. It's kind of more mass market stuff, but it's always nice to see a brand like NK serving as many markets as they can so your truck can match your sports car. Wrapping it all up for you guys here, NK's been making wheels for 74 f***ing years. What more can you ask for? These guys have perfected the affordable, strong, lightweight wheel and have developed some insane technology to keep weight and cost down and strength up. They make wheels for the pinnacle of racing, F1, and for weekend warriors and spec Miata and everything in between. Now, if you're looking for a set of NKs, be sure to hit the link in the video description down below and let me know which brand we should cover in the next video. As always, be sure to upload your vehicle to our vehicle gallery to take part in our monthly Fitman battles and show your ride off to the world. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be sure to see you in the next one very soon.